people. And now, Sven, the stage is yours about Eclipse Kuxa. Yeah, thank you very much for the warm introduction. Also, thank you very much for having the opportunity to speak here. Speaking about Eclipse Kuxa, it's kind of like the new old kid on the block in the SUV, because as was already said, it's a product that exists in the Eclipse Foundation since 2018, and that's why I also would like to take you on a kind of like a his, um, history journey, because what was the vision in 2018 when Kuxa was founded? Because by then it was way larger than it is by now, and that's what you will see in the next couple of minutes during the presentation. Because in 2018, the idea was basically to take existing technologies, open source technologies, for instance, Eclipse IoT, combine them with the requirements from a specific domain, like the automotive domain in this case, and the equation is you get Kuxa. So that's also why I put the mission statement in here. It's create a cross vendor connected vehicle platform that relies on open standards, which is important here, and uses open source software to leverage the potential of a large developer community. Fast forward four years, this somehow aligns also with the goals of the SUV project, at least in my perception. And this is also part of the reason why Kuxa is now presented in this context. So also to give you an understanding where it was coming from, the idea was to enable the whole development cycle of uh, connected vehicle apps. So you have um, IDE to develop your apps, you have the opportunity to push these developed apps to a cloud platform, and then there would be an app store from which you can download the applications to a specific vehicle where it is executed in the vehicle platform. Um, as you can see already by the uh, logos here, the idea was again to combine a lot of different open source technologies to like this common ecosystem. So in IT, four years is a lot of things. So what happened? Um, we, of course, didn't focus the development on all of these parts. Parts. Because to be honest with you, the whole development was started as part of a funded research project, and when this funding stopped, there was also some, let's say, recalibration, re refocusing within the project. So the question was, what if we can access standardized data in our cloud backend or car data in our cloud backend? So what would happen if that would be possible? What if you can use standard IT technologies to run the software in the vehicles? And even what, think, uh, what if we can use these applications to interact with that car? Like even more from a cloud developer perspective, that's what you have to, have to keep in mind here. And we, even everybody has the option to use these features. And then, I mean, it's also something that I think we, most of us are kind of aiming for, how we can focus on developing customer value instead of reinventing the wheel all, or, or the whole stack all over again. So one answer to this, and this is also what you can see already in the top right, is a sub-project or a sub-repository in Kuxa, which I will talk about in the next minutes for most of the time. Namely, it's Kuxa Val. It's the Kuxa vehicle abstraction layer. And what is this is doing? It is implementing a set of standards. And here we already have this open approach. Because there is, as Michael already said, the industry association called Covisa. And what Covisa is doing, they create the so-called VSS, Vehicle Signal Specification, which is in the end an open data model, or you could also call it a taxonomy of the sensors and actors that you can access in, in a car, like really on a very abstract level. Um, when you have this taxonomy, you also want to have a way to access this data, like a standard to how to to get to this data. And this is what's happening in the W3C, especially the W3C Automotive, because what they came up is the so-called uh, VIS, the Vehicle Information Server Specification. And so much about more like dry specifications and paper. I mean, if you have such a standard, you really need also the implementation. And this is where Cook has come into play. So you have this VSS data model, which is used by Cooksaval, and you also have this uh, vehicle information service specification, which is in the end more or less a WebSocket API, which recommends to use this VSS, which is also the connection between the two. And this all comes together in Cooksaval. So from this, more from the theoretical view, let's go into the actual taxonomy we have here. So the way it works is in the end, it's a tree structure. So for instance, if you want to access the tire pressure in your wheel, you would just go to vehicle, chassis, axle, row two, wheel, tire, and then you get the sensor value for your pressure. In the same way, you can also access the data from actuators. For instance, in this small extract of the whole specification, the performance mode by just going through vehicle, drivetrain, transmission, and then you enter with the performance mode. And uh, on the bottom, you also see like a small example how this would all look like in YAML. So the question is, again, 
how to integrate this in your overall project. So let's assume we have a, a car. I mean, it's not quite surprising since we talk about software-defined vehicles, which has a CAN interface. Or in this, um, for what you can do then, you can plug in some Cuxa hardware, or your own hardware. I will talk about the Cuxa hardware in a minute to actually get to the data that is coming out of the scan. So it's just like this, um, yeah, bits in the end. You just get some numbers and don't have really good understanding what those numbers actually are. So what you c then can do, you can write or implement um, something that in the Cuxa project is called the Cuxa feeder. And this is something where you put in the DBC file to, and also a VSS mapping. So with these two files, you, f you get the actual mapping from the CAN raw data to the VSS information in your VSS tree. So this is, again, quite specific to the uh, car. But again, you can then give your specific mapping to your specific car and end up with this more ab abstract view on your data in the VSS model. And this is what's happening then to Cuxaval. Because um, as I said, this VIS standard is using uh, WebSockets. Or you can also say you do not really want to rely on this, but on other ways to accessing your data, like gRPC or even REST. And then you get the data conforming to the VSS specification out of Cuxaval after it has been converted by the uh, Cuxa feeder, or in this case, the so-called DBC feeder. And by doing this, you actually get some information out of your data, because now you can align your data or assign your data to a specific uh, node in your uh, VSS tree. And what, what, what can happen then? You can then, of course, write your own specific application which consume this data, maybe consume it with other information that you have, and somehow create knowledge out of that. And this, of course, is not just bound to the vehicle. So to this abstraction, you could also imagine to access this data from the cloud. So to write your own application, which is just transferring this data, or you use a specific framework which you want to rely to transport data into the cloud and then have something in the cloud where you can access the data in this VSS specification. You could call it digital twin, but I'm not really a big fan of this term, the digital twin, because there are so many definitions out there. But in the end, in somehow you get the state of the, dev of the device, or in this case the vehicle, in the same specification as you could also access the data in the vehicle, making it also possible to um, port, port the applications between the car or the vehicle, since it's the same API which is used in the end being VSS or VIS. So for people who like even more technical pictures, this is a summary of what I just said. So you have Cook Saval in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in between or in the middle. And on the bottom, you have these different data feeders, which can come from different data sources, different protocols, whatever you like in your car. Then you have this common layer of this uh, VSS specification. And this is the data that you then can access from Cook Saval or the implementations in Cook Saval. To stay on this more technical level, but with an example, this is one way how it could look like. It's just directly taken from the project website or the GitHub repositories. Is imagine you have some SIM IP feeder. You also have some maybe some out of the adaptive feeder and the larger example, the DBC, which could all be combined in this abstraction layer for Cuxaval. That's also the name why we have this vehicle abstraction layer in there. So. This might have been nice. Maybe you are interested to this point. So the question is, what does Cuxa Val actually bring into the mix? So it's nice to have a specification, but what do I get from Cuxa? And this is actually quite a lot over the uh, past few years, or Cuxa Val. So there are two ways to access this data. So there's the Cuxa Val server, which is basically providing the, the WCC with API and VSS written in C++. You also have the option to use gRPC to access your data. And another way is the so-called Cuxaval data broker, which is written in Rust, and also allows you to access your data over VSS uh, using gRPC. But the nice thing with this data broker is also you have a bit more um, extended API to, to, some, uh, to manage your subscriptions. For instance, to only get warned when a certain threshold is reached or other topics which are a bit more complex in the query log logic. On top of these uh, actual data providers, so these Cuxaval or uh, server or data broker, there's also the op opportunity to use a Python or Go SDK, which are basically a way to interact with these two software components. And based on the Python SDK, there's also an interactive CLI just to test around uh, with the data that you get there. 
when it comes to feeders, as I said earlier, these are a bit specific to the protocol or the car or the application that you want to build on top. But more also as an example, there is a feeder for DBC what, and also for GPS, for GPS signals, or to simply replay signals. So in case you have a recording of a test drive or something, you can use a replay feeder to replay those signals uh, to your car or to your application in the car. Uh, which would be covered by these examples. And uh, last but not least, it's maybe some interesting if you want to test it. Also, the built Docker images are available for ARM64 and X8664. Um, okay. So, this so much about Cuxaval. Um, as you can maybe see by the dot and also my introduction that we have this Cuxa cloud and this IDE, in the, at least in the early phases, you will notice that there might be something else. And this is the uh, Cuxa hardware, which is also kind of like a newer thing here, because it's a baseboard or open hardware. Because uh, what the people in the Cuxa project said, okay, it's nice to have software and it's nice to have uh, run at least on more or less standardized topics, but what about if you also can have at least a standardized development or evaluation environment? And that's why they came up with some open source schematics for this Cuxa dongle or the Cuxa hardware which is, can be used to access your data over the OBD port. That's also why we had this example with Khan and OBD in the beginning. And which you then just can plug into your car and also build yourself. The only, I wouldn't say drawback, but a tweak here is for the actual compute, you need a Raspberry Pi Compute Model 4. So this is something you need on top, which is maybe not fully open source. Um, one thing, it's a bit quick, but I wanted to show it to you in action, uh, is the use of the Cuxaval test client. So what we see here is a typical flow which uh, you would have if you interact with this uh, VSS server. So first of all, you need to authenticate. And then you would get some metadata, so some information of what you actually can expect from this data point, in this case, the vehicle speed. Then some of the feeders would set the vehicle speed and straightforward, you could, but if you set the value, you can also get it. So that's the whole like really fast and maybe easy story of this Cuxaval idea. I will just maybe start another round because I talked about there. So this is again the authentication. Then you get the metadata. And you can set and get the speed in the end. So that's the hardware. I talked about that. So you can just download the schematics and use it for yourself. And of course, when you always when we talk about an open source project, especially when it's already under development, it's interesting for developers to know what are upcoming topics. So what are we currently working on? What is the idea of the whole, uh, in the upcoming months? So actually there is some work in the Cuxa cloud, I haven't talked about it so much yet, um, because it's maybe upcoming work, is to bring this cloud components at home. So to provide some kind of virtual mas machine template which you can use to set up this cloud on your local development environment. But mostly I would focus on um, Cuxaval which is one thing which is currently worked on is to have a unified set of gRPC APIs for this relevant components. So you notice there's a data broker, there's the Vault server, and the idea is that they really use the same APIs, which also makes it easier to use the same SDKs for Python and Go. And so this way also all the feeders should work with uh, both components, which is like one of the ongoing topics. Another interesting thing or an issue which is heavily discussed right now is when you see this data broker, and talk about actuators. Um, I mean, we talking about real world examples, so it's not like if you set an actuator to a specific value, it will um, change its value in a split of a second. For instance, think about a seed, it has to move. And with the data broker, it should be possible to differentiate between the desired value, so the value where it should be set to, and the value where it is actually are. So this way you could also figure out whether the seed is actually blocked or your door is blocked if you want to change uh, some position of the window or something like that. And last but not least, it's more maybe from the developer side interesting, there's the Python SDK and the aim is to automatically release this with, uh, to PyPy with each release. So what this actually means is you can get this Python SDK already with, um, over PyPy. And this is also where I would like to conclude the talk and I'm really waiting for your questions because this is a way you can really start get started with the project. Just get the code even from PyPy or from GitHub and think about using it, maybe think about other data brokers 
or maybe even think about some components that might be interesting for your, for your cloud perspective, where Cooks also could be a place. But I would say in the context of SDV, the most work and the main focus is Cooksaval. So try it out and talk to us. With that, I really thank you for being here, for listening to the talk, also to, for coming back from the coffee for this talk. So I'm glad you made it here. And I'm open for questions. Sven. Thanks a lot. I have been told to move to the right side because the sun is coming around. <laughs> so, and the cameras cannot deal with it. Any question to Sven? I have a question. So yeah. uh, I'm not really sure if I understood correctly the difference or the relation between the Covisa VSS standard and the VISS specification from the W3C. Can you elaborate a little on that? Hmm? So maybe going back to the slide, VSS is only, and this is maybe good only in this case, um, specifying the taxonomy and the data model of, uh, that you can have. So you could then think of how to access this data in this data model. So you then need an API to access the data in the data model. And one API could this be this WCC automotive with standard. But when talking about this GRPC interface, for instance, it's not completely following or standardized according to this W3C. It's more its own way of accessing the data, but the data model stays the same. Does the VSS only specify the meta model for modeling the data, or does it also define specific instances of the metadata? Meaning, um, um, uh, I don't know, the, hmm? you, you showed us some metadata about speed in a car. So yeah. does it define, a, I don't know, properties of a speedometer or something? So it actually does both. It first of all starts of defining like a really, I would say, minimal meta layer or a meta model. And on top of that, it defines one, let's say, model. But what you can always do is you can uh, abstract or um, not abstract, but modify the model for your specific use case. So one option which I haven't talked about yet is on which is somehow new is a, a way of overlays. So you have like the space VSS taxonomy, and then you can overlay your specific overlays, which would be an example. Let's say you have a car with six doors instead of four. You could uh, add an overlay. If you have a two-wheeler, you might think of maybe there's no tire pressure on the right wheel in, in, the, in the second row, stuff like that. So that's why it's kind of both, I would say. And, and yeah. Corisa, is, is that a... a a consortium, or, or what is what kind of organization is that? Who, who they, they are creating this VSS spec, right? In a way, yeah. So, I mean, this is maybe a question which I would hand over to your neighbor there, who's like a really good, way better in <laughs> promoting Covisa than I do. So, <laughs> yes, uh, the answer to that it is uh, another open source initiative and consortium, uh, member driven, uh, industry led data model. That's it was formerly Geneva. Yes. Yeah. To clarify, we rebranded <laughs> to Covesa. Tough cup. The yeah, organization formerly known as Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> they did some rebranding, yeah. <sighs> and maybe another interesting detail about this uh, VIS um, is if you look actually in the specification, the way I understood it is they say this is just an API how to access data in the vehicle. And we recommend you that the data is following VSS. So technically, there could be someone doing this without VSS, but it's yeah. more like coming together or done together. Yeah. Great. So just to add on this, we are in discussion with Covisa. They just established a new body, which is called Data Expert Group, which talks about specifying data structure and similar, which would be perfect extension to what we would like to do. So. My message again, being part of that ecosystem and talking to each other, it's absolutely helpful. I see that there's an online question to, to Sven. Yeah, actually two. So uh, the first one is, is Cooks supporting complex data types such as list structure or just simple data types? I mean, this is again more a question to the VSS, but of course Cooks needs to support it if it's in the standard. Um, so. I'm not completely sure. I mean, there's, there's some kind of array structure, but it would, would, wouldn't say it gets more complex than that. This, the most signals I've seen is like that this tree is so specific to a specific signal that uh, it's a, a single value in most cases in the end. So. That answers your question. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> and the second one is, what's the difference between the Cooks and out-of-box sandbox? What was the second term? 
What's the difference between the Kuxa and Autobox Sandbox? I actually, uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what Autobox Sandbox in this case should be. Um, not sure. Maybe the, 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 the person who asked that question can give a little bit more explanation what out of box yeah. is. In the meantime, I would have a question. I know that we have at least two fans of Rust here. <laughs> <laughs> I would know that Tom would look up. Do you see Misra Rust? Do you see Misra rules for Rust? So Misra is available for C and C++. But we see more and more software coming with Rust, maybe even targeting the car. And I saw that the, I think I understand that this is more on the PC side, but still you're doing all those some stuff in Rust. Do we see maybe connecting my previous question about quality of software and other things and automotive processes? Do we see a way to see Rust in the car with Misra Rust? Okay. <laughs> Have you ever thought about, ever discussed about this in your team, uh, about to, Rust and serious development? To be honest, um, when, when I was there, not. Okay. Um, maybe to give, give some context, um, when it, there was a decision to do this data broker in Rust, uh, that's not something where I was yeah. heavily involved. So yeah. the only thing I can say is that the developer who did that were quite happy about using Rust. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. But is there an update on the out of box? Here's another question. Okay. So, okay. could the development of feeders to integrate with Autosar Adaptive related to the recently announced support for vehicle APIs on Autosar's side? It would be great to see all different initiatives on the topic come together at, at some point. Short answer, yes. i also not a huge expert on what's currently going on in Autosar. That's maybe again a question for my Covisa friend, <laughs> if you want to comment on that. <laughs> Hello, yes. Um, so at the moment, uh, talks are happening with Autosar and Cavesa, and um, we are looking into opening up parts of Autosar, uh, specifically around the vehicle API topic. Um, and yes, there is a lot of close alignment. So keep posted here, guys. <laughs> okay. Any other question? So, Sven, then thanks a lot. Your Thank applause. You. Your <laughs>